What is going on guys? What is going on 27 squad? Welcome back to another video and it's late But I'm gonna be doing this recap video for you guys. Hopefully I'll get it up by the morning I'm not gonna edit it now, but I do want to talk about the Giants versus the Cincinnati Bengals in which the Giants won 25 to 23 in their week 3 preseason game now the Giants won the game But I don't think they won in in terms of who is the best team. I think Cincinnati came out there Their starting offense was was great uh, Grant you know, they wasn't fantastic. They weren't scoring points, but they were moving the ball down the field. You got CJ Ozoma, uh, Ozoma, first play of the game, tight end screen. The, the the Giants bid on the play action, and they were completely lost from there on. They were not expecting a tight end screen as the first play of the game, and it was smart by Zach Taylor in doing and making that play. The Giants starting offense obviously was without Saquon Barkley, but Wayne Goldman came back from injury and looked pretty great. Now his stat line doesn't really say it's fantastic. He had 8 carries for 31 yards, but he did what he had to do. He he got the tough yardage. He got the first downs. Uh, when, when there was something that didn't open up, he was able to go somewhere else. Eli Manning even blocked for him on a play. It was fantastic. It looked like Eli Manning ran a 4-4-40 in that play. So that being said, I wanted to see Eli Manning out there with the first team offense a little bit more, but the first team um, offensive line played well. I mean, there was a lot of times where Eli Manning had a clean pocket. That's something that we haven't seen from the Giants for quite a while. Maybe we've seen once or twice where Eli has a clean pocket, but it, it's consistently now. And I know this is only a preseason, but we were facing starter guys, and I know the Cincinnati defensive line isn't fantastic. But, I mean, we're getting there. We're, we're getting there with the offensive line. Obviously, as well, the wide receivers aren't uh, our starting wide receiver. Sterling Shepard wasn't playing. I didn't see Golden Tate out there either. So we've got we've got some guys out there. You know, Benny Fowler, Cody Latimer. These are guys are our third our, our third and fourth wide receiver starting, and they actually played pretty well. Now, Cody Latimer did miss a catch, two catches on the first drive, Eli Manning's drive, in which the first catch was on a slant route. It was a low throw by Eli. Could have been a little higher, but either way, Cody Latimer needs to make that catch. On top of that, uh, later on on the drive Cody Latimer missed a catch um, now this one I'm not going to blame Cody Latimer as I'm going to blame Eli Manning for it was behind Cody Latimer and e Cody Latimer was already like a, C a BW Webb was already on his tail like a magnet uh, so it was kind of impossible for Cody Latimer to reach out and grab that ball on top of that he got hit almost simultane uh, simultaneously by the safety I believe it was Sean Williams there so Co I'm not going to blame Cody Latimer as I'm going to blame Eli Manning for that throw it was a little behind him could have been a better throw but at the same time Cody Latimer, if he wants to step up and make this team and get some reps, he has to make plays like that. I mean, there just isn't a, there just isn't a way around it. Now, Eli played well. His stat line, obviously, in the preseason, uh, he only plays like one drive per game, which makes no sense because the third preseason game, we're supposed to see Eli a lot longer. This is supposed to be the dress re rehearsal. So I guess this is the, this is the most we're going to see of Eli. He may not even play the fourth preseason game. Uh, but he was 4 of 8, 41 yards, and um, and that was pretty much it. At 65.1 quarterback uh, rating. And, uh, I mean, it should have been higher than that. Obviously, two, two catches could have been caught. Not really his fault, uh, but Eli looked fine. He, he, there was nothing that jumped out the screen. There was nothing that really, uh, you know, uh, was a red flag for me for, with Eli Manning. On the other side, obviously Cincinnati, like I said, they didn't score too many points, but they got the ball, they got the ball moving. Andy Dalton looked pretty comfortable there. I mean, the starting defensive line did give the offensive line, uh, the starting offensive line for the Bengals, a run for their money. The uh, our defensive line is getting a lot better. Lorenzo Carter adding a arsenal to his moves. He has a deadly spin move he's been working on. I've seen it in practice. I've seen it in in, in mic'd up, uh, um, you know, uh, videos of him. I've seen it in preseason games. He's really working on that spin move, and it's really working out. The defense this whole game has, I mean, I'm not happy. I'm not happy with this team. I'm not happy. I mean, I know if you guys watch my live stream, I said it. I, I think Cincinnati looked like the better team out there. We just happened to score more points. Obviously, with that uh, return uh, touchdown by Britton Golden really put us over the edge and win this game. But if you ask me, the Cincinnati looked a lot better. Um, offense, I, the, start, the, the first team offense and the first team defense, uh, it was debatable who was better. But as far as the depth goes, 
Cincinnati takes the cake there. There was a bunch of guys that really stood out to me. Ryan Finley was there for the majority of the game. He was 14 of 20 for 155 yards. No touchdowns, no picks, but had himself a good game. He was sacked three times, however, but he played himself a great game. Rodney Anderson, who I thought was retired because of his injuries and things like that. I didn't even know he signed with a team, uh, the running back out of Oklahoma, but he was a surprise to me. Now, rushing, he led the team in rushing with eight carries for seven yards, which is laughable, but I mean, he got tough yards, man. His long was eight yards, and he got seven yards, so you could tell how many times he was tackled behind a lot of scrimmage, but he was able to fight for so many yards, especially in the receiving game where he was four catches for 51 yards. He he was a real surprise to me. He was a definitely one of the players of the game for Cincinnati. Uh, CJ Ozoma, the 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 tight end, who obviously t Tyler Eifer is the tight end, but I think Uzoma is going to start making his way as a starting tight end as Tyler Eifer really has his injury problems. Uh, Vintel Bryant and Damian Willis, those two receivers really stood out for me for Cincinnati. Uh, Damian Willis, three catches, 55 yards. Vintel, four catches, 55 yards. Uh, Damian Willis also having a touchdown. Now, Damian Willis caught a and just mossed Janoris Jenkins in the first their first drive of the game. Had a fan, I think it was first or second drive of the game. Uh, fantastic catch by Damian Willis and Janoris Jenkins should have been there. He should have got his head around uh, in time and knocked the ball away. There was another time where he was on Janoris Jenkins again. I think it was the play right after that as well. Uh, Janoris Jenkins got tested again and almost got caught on once again, but Janoris Jenkins was able to get his head around at the nick. As a matter of fact, he was about a millisecond late because Janoris Jenkins was already he was already on the on his way to the ground, but he was able to knock the ball away at the same time. So, um, not a good showing from Janoris Jenkins. Damian Willis, Damian Willis really showed off uh, today. Uh, you look at Josh Malone on that fade catch; it was amazing. Vintel Bryant, as well as getting down to the to the end zone, uh, played well. Cody. Uh, participated as well and um, the Giants for the most part as well Darius Slayton his first play of the game his first play as a New York Giant he makes a 27 yard grab down to the one yard line was very close to making the end zone but his wrist was out of bounds but fantastic throw uh, fantastic catch Daniel Jones underthrew it just a little bit, but if it was overthrown just a yard, it would have been out of bounds. So great throw by Daniel Jones as well. Uh, we then move on to Daniel Jones. And um, listen, Daniel Jones, nothing really jumps out the page as a bad thing. I mean, there's no negatives. Well, there I will get to, to the negatives, but constantly, he is constantly a bright spot on this team. Again, having a fantastic completion percentage. He was 9 of 11 for 141 yards. 9 completions, 141 yards. That's, that's fantastic. He was sacked one time where he fumbled the ball, but it was later recovered by Nate Solder. He got really nailed. I think it was Carl Lawson. It was one of those guys really nailed Daniel Jones, but what did he do uh, after Afterwards, he still kept moving, still moved the ball down the field, didn't let it get to him, and that's what I like to see. Now, my only knack on Daniel Jones, and I, when I do a film, I will do a film review on him. My only knack on Daniel Jones is that he stares down his re receivers a little too long. I can't remember if it was T.J. Jones or like Cody Latimer or Benny Fowler, one of those guys. Um, but I remember the Giants lined up on the right hash, all the way on the right hash, and Daniel Jones, after he snapped the ball, stared down the receiver all the way to the left, the, the left wide receiver, uh, the whole time that was on a dig route waiting for him to get open. He was not open because the cornerback was looking at Jones the whole way, staring him down. He threw the ball anyway, didn't go through his progressions, and it was incomplete. That is a rookie mistake. Obviously, all rookies are going to go through. They want to stare down a the receiver. They want to go through with their first read, and that's something I did know notice about Daniel Jones, even when he had that fantastic game against the Jets. He stared down the receivers a little too long, and that can be dangerous when you're moving on to the regular season in the NFL. So that's my only knack I have on Daniel Jones, so I'll move on from that. Alex Tanney played absolute garbage. There were so many times, and I don't know why, it was only when Alex Tanney was playing quarterback, but there were so many times where there was a wide receiver down the field, whether it was Alonzo Russell, TJ, uh, TJ Jones, or any other receiver down the field, butt naked open, and uh, Alex Tanney just couldn't hit him for, for the life of him. But Kyle Letta comes in, and Kyle Letta's coming in as a fourth quarterback, and he performs a lot better than Alex Tanney did. Now, granted, they may get different talent. They may be facing against different talent, but it doesn't matter. Alex Tanney definitely outperformed. Uh, I mean, Kyle Letta definitely, definitely outperformed Alex Tanney. 
the running game for the Giants was okay. I mean, there were some bright spots, but where there, there were some times where they were just trying to run out the clock or just trying to burn clock down. So I understand why they didn't run the run the ball as well as I would have thought they would. The defense, like I said, had their moments that they made great plays, like on a fourth and four, or fourth and two, or something like that. Corey Ballantine was able to knock the ball away. That was a fantastic play by Corey Ballantine. But there are also some times where he gave up some plays as well, which is a rookie mistake. I'm not going to keep him, uh, you know, hold him to that. Uh, Dexter Lawrence had a very good uh, batted down pass, I believe, on the first drive. Very good job by Dexter Lawrence. And also was seen, you know, forcing pressure throughout the game. Lorenzo Carr, like I said, is working on that spin move and looking great. The X-Man. O'Shane Zimenez had two sacks today. Congrats to o O'Shane Zimenez. That's three sacks in the preseason. He looked absolutely phenomenal. I don't care if it was against, if it was against second teamers. He looked great. Um, I know he's not going to bump up to see first team because Lorenzo Carter is there, but he should definitely split reps with Lorenzo Carter in the regular season. Another sack came from Josiah Taufa. There were five sacks for the Giants today, and that that really blew my mind. I didn't think we would get five sacks, but uh, great job by the uh, by the defense. Josiah Taufa had a sack as well. Um, I want to say Sean Chandler had a sack, and Jonathan Anderson had a sack. So those were the five sacks from the New York Giants today. Didn't see too much of DeAndre Baker. I'm not even sure he played this game. Maybe he's dealing with an injury or something that I'm not worried, uh, uh, aware about. But shout out to Kerry Wynn, who had a fantastic game. Four tackles, one sack, and one tackle for loss with one quarterback hit, which I think is just the same thing. I think it's just one sack. But um, great job from Kerry Wynn, the former New York Giant. I have a lot of respect for that guy. Um, so great job by him. B.W. Webb was playing for the Cincinnati. Didn't look fantastic whatsoever. Um, and Bobby Hart played also. Didn't look great as well. John Jerry played didn't look great as well so I'm happy of what the Giants did and who they got rid of and who they brung in it really shows the development of this team you just look at the former New York Giants where they're at right now a bunch of them are on the Cincinnati Bengals yes Kerry Wynn performed I wish we had him back but a lot of these other guys uh, you know Bobby Hart John Jerry BW Webb a lot of these guys are not performing well and I'm happy they're not on the team anymore so that brings me up to my award system. Let's give uh, my offensive player of the game. I'm going to give to Daniel Jones, who was 9 of 11, 141 yards. Uh, the offensive player of the game goes to him because I can't really give it to anybody else. Who else am I going to give it to? Uh, a lot of people had great plays, but not as consistent as Daniel Jones was throughout his playing time. So got to give it to Daniel Jones. Uh, defensively, have to give it to O'Shane Zimenez. Uh, he had four tackles, two sacks, two, uh, two tackles for loss. Uh, he, he was fantastic. Um, I'm, I'm happy to, I'm happy with what we got with O'Shane Zimenez. I want to see our edge rush get a little better as far as the starting guys go. I want to see our pass rush in general get a little better. Um, but this is the start. We're moving forward. We're, you know, we're getting better. So, and my Terrence Mitchell award, the player that's just having a bad day is going to go to the whole entire Cincinnati offensive line. You let a team that was I mean, the one of their biggest question marks is pass rush. The Giants have one of their biggest question marks is pass rush. And you let a team get five sacks on you um, that is not very good in the pass rush, no matter where you are at depth. I mean, we're just not that good as far as the pass rush goes. And the Giants looked fantastic against the offensive line. So um, not a very good look for, for the Cincinnati offensive line. They definitely need to work on that. And my at least you tried award is going to go to Rodney Anderson. You can give it to Ryan Finley as well. He made plays, but he was more like a game manager to me. He didn't really make any game-breaking throws. He was just throwing to whatever the defense gave him, which is great and all that, but um, got to give it to Rodney Anderson, who was really fighting for yards, breaking tackles, running. His his run, his yards after con uh, contact must be the majority of his yards. He was absolutely insane. He was great. Uh, Cincinnati has himself a great uh, uh, running back there. Um, and that's all I got for you guys today. I know it's a little bit of a long video for a preseason game, but just giving you guys all of what I uh, what I thought about. I don't know if I missed anything. Maybe I did. It doesn't matter. We can talk about it in the comments. Leave your thoughts in the comments comment section below, and I will see you guys in the next video.